boom to the hey, all you sports fans out there in the tubo sphere. To you, the individual, one is the most important number. Welcome to Fast Track Sports Rack. How did you on? New Gen 5.0 version of the OMSR. I am your brief, very concise host, Will, the alternative ESPN sports thrill. Alright, we've got some college hoops coming up. A little bit of some of the old standards of the OMSR. I'll take you through. Pi Kappa Alpha, Al Sweethearts. Mm. Your review chapter, Alpha Tau, giving you props. Dwayne Darnett, ultimate sports fan. OSR mascot. Hey, holy real animal, Batman. There is a bear, bear cat. A little interesting fact about that. I didn't know that either. When I saw a bear cat as a mascot for uh, like a division FCS school, it's like, huh? Cincinnati should be pissed off if someone's copying their made up animal. Pfft, wrong. Alright, so you see it's Cincinnati, San Diego State. This was started the OMSR when they were just ready to give the national championship to Duke in 2011. I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> that was my response. All right, the thing about basketball is it's a very fluid situation. It's difficult to film at times. Does it go to overtime, so forth and so on. Always try to bring in some relevant details of the first half and then let them take us the on-site commentators, and them being through the second half highlights. But I caught him a little bit late, so there's a good discussion talking points going on with regard to Cincinnati of the past. Quickie Sport Ranch, right. As it segues to Mick Croner. Two for one. I hope Bob Huggins might have to get that DUI. That's what happened. Why'd you have to break your leg, Kenyon Martin, playing St. Louis? Dude did not have one tapped. I'm telling it. Totally bummed him out, changed his life. Of course, he couldn't play as well either. Yeah, he had one of those severe, like, broken in a bunch of spots type of injury. And St. Louis had, like, single-digit wins that year. You know, but every team gets to play in their conference tournament. Remember when Georgia got in the tournament and they had a losing record? That was, like, in the late 90s. Okay. And then Mick Cronin. See some statistics here. It's hard to say the dry mouth. All right, so... The uh, segue talking about he just hasn't been able to live up to the standard as set by Bob Huggins, even though he had really only one high profile team, as previously mentioned. And Duke gets to win the national championship that year in 92. Didn't have to play anybody. Cincinnati was still the overall number one team, but your point guard, you know, would have a hard time adjusting carrying a team. And he damn near did it anyway. Steve Logan, you may recall. All right, so it's on the channel. Mick Cronin, Ted Valentine confrontation from last year. He's always like so demure, soft spoken. I still think that's really interesting. There is a bear cat. And uh, Dan Dockich, you know, letting it rip. <laughs> that Midwestern Indiana kind of way. Well, not per Indiana per se, but just very whoop, straightforward. Made a little few comments on that so that the intro show is not as long, but I gotta explain everything to you guys trying to make it interesting. I used to do just a voiceover. Uh, the wimps way out. Not doing that anymore. So, all his interviews, very different persona, and I didn't capture this. I saw it. I mean, I watched all the games while I'm covering them to get out of the best moments. Man, he had this really projected bad attitude to a referee in this game. And I think the deal is, Mick Cronin is suffering from a whole host of issues wrapped into one, unfortunately, poor guy. <laughs> little man syndrome, a little bit of a fashion uh, disability, losing his hair, and even if he had it, he's a redhead. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, love Cincinnati basketball, been following him for a long time. All right. Game clips coming up. Thanks for watching. No silly DUIs while you're out there. Remind us, sports and alcohol, they are joined at the hip. For real kids. In case you ever wondered what a bear cat looks like, we just saw one. For real. Kind of made up animal. There it is, the bear cat of Cincinnati. And right now, the bear cat's trailing. I mean, that's an ugly animal. <laughs> well, that's typical Dan Dawkins for us. It's kind of cool looking. Oh. Well, they have to back.
He averages 9.9 points. Maybe that's why Dan Dog is. Uh, I probably shouldn't say that. Well, I'm, I started it, so. Coached a year. We don't have a player. At his alma, Indiana. That averages more than 10.2 points per game. Which means Winston Shepard, the 784th leading scorer in college basketball. That's the face of a lemur and the body of a Wolverine. It's kind of cool. Having said that, though, he hasn't won the way Bob Huggins won. This has not been a Final Four team here in Cincinnati with Mick Cronin. But are the expectations for Cincinnati realistic if that's where you think they ought to be? And you're a Bearcat fan? Bob went to one Final Four in 1992. And he established this program as being one of the better programs in the country. But now, all of a sudden, you've got an arms race going on in college basketball. They'll be there that, that maybe precludes having the greatest success. But hey, they won the American last year. Time to do it. That's pretty good by me. Knocked out of bounds with five to shoot. We're talking about that at shoot around today. That if you took a look up at the wall of banners here at Fifth Third, Every other banner's got a different name of a different conference on it going back to the 20s for Cincinnati as Cal has to force one up. And I'm betting they hope there's one more league in their future, the Big 12, which there's a lot of rumors about them possibly joining. San Diego State, of course, on the other hand, with Steve Fisher, nine 20 win seasons in a row for Steve Fisher. He has taken them to five straight tournaments, a couple of Sweet 16s, and last year won the Mountain West Conference regular season outright. And Bob, he did the exact opposite. Shepard gives it up. Holding will go to the free throw line. He took over a program that had lost, had losing record 13 out of the 14 previous years. And all Steve Fisher has done is not only make San Diego State relevant in the, on the West Coast, but that man right there and his assistant to our left there, Brian Dutcher, have made them a significant and relevant program to the entire country. And it's absolutely remarkable what Steve Fisher has done. Welcome back to the American Conference on ESPN. And welcome back to Cincinnati. As we're just about set for the start of the second half, Holiday Hoops presented by Kenny Jewelers. And the low-scoring game we expected between San Diego State and the Bearcats. Papa Schusen and Dan Dockett set for the second half. Defense, we expected that that was going to be the theme of tonight's game. It certainly wasn't the first half. Well, you give a 22 to 20 score. Defense has ruled the day. And one of the things that Cincinnati did to get back into the game, Bobby, was not extend their defense. Cincinnati likes to extend their defense off the free throws, uh, dead balls, but they extended their defense and put a lot of pressure on San Diego State. One of the things that the San Diego State coaching staff gave me notes on to start the second half was the first guy's got to catch the ball around the free throw line instead of so deep and catching it too close to the baseline in both of these possessions. See when I caught the ball, it's under the bucket. And now look at the defense. They're hunting San Diego State that causes a trap. That gets the ball here. San Diego State closer to the free throw line, catching it way too deep. And so much of the offense has come inside the paint for both teams, neither team. And you expect, I guess, low-scoring teams to not be tremendous from the outside. We saw that in the first half. An offensive explosion already in the second half. 12 points for San Diego State. They only had 20 in the first half. Bobby, biggest difference is this right here. Look at the ball moving. The ball goes in the post. It goes short corner. It gets skipped. And when you skip it, then you have the opposite post available. Great. That's the biggest difference in the second half is San Diego State has moved the basketball when they've broken pressure. And Cincinnati hasn't had anything in the secondary break once they've broken pressure. They're kind of stagnant and playing against the stacked defense. And Steve Fisher playing against his defense. You know, they're struggle like the you saw the opening before he got the ball. That's what good players do. They see one Polaroid ahead. He went right past, finished with his chin on the rim, absorbed the contact, three-point opportunity. Third foul on Spencer. Nice basketball players see the game one play ahead, one play ahead. That's how it was said about Magic Johnson and Larry Byrne. Isaiah Thomas. He saw it one play ahead. Straightly back to the corner, but unable to handle the pass was Winston Shepard. Bob, I'll give you an example. Shrigley right there didn't see one play ahead. He had his mind made up. He was taking one dribble and firing it to Shepard in the corner. That's the difference between 
good play and a terrible play. And Trizzy made a terrible play. Now. continuing to struggle from behind the arc. Two for 17 tonight, 300th in the country coming into this game, and it's basically been the game that we expected. It's been a fun game, really fun game, and I think we expected a fun game, but both teams do not let you get to the You have to make jump shots, and obviously San Diego State cannot make jump shots. And you know what? Talented team, but if you can't shoot, you can't score. It's that simple in modern-day college basketball, and when you play games in the 40s, low 50s, a tough catch in the corner. Bob, it was a good play, but it was a really bad play by number 13, Shepard. He went to the outside six seconds ago. You just stay in front of the man. I'm pretty sure you can kind of see him. He wanted the timeout. No. And then he stopped. Did you see the referee put his right hand up and then he put it back. And uh, Fish let it go. And there's your result. Good coaching right there. As a movement, you're going to see. Watch the bottom. Watch the feet. Right there. That play. Hits the right leg of Winston Shepard, and he falls down, and that's, that's wild. Hey, yeah, good groan here, not happy. He stood and stared at Joe Rosen. Now, you got to understand, back Joe here at Cincinnati, here at Fifth Third Arena. We are in overtime, and Dan, here's how we got here. Some big plays made by both teams down the stretch. Yeah, San Diego State now fighting like crazy. Just started lifting up. Going two for 17 early, started knocking in threes. Pretty impressive toughness, and then a foul here that a lot of people don't think is a foul, but it's a trip. And next thing you know, San Diego State's in overtime, but this guy right here has been something. He has been that one right there, got him going the last six or seven minutes, and on into overtime. There hasn't been anybody able to contain him. He's been tough. This one right here was just dead in the eye and sticking right in you. With about eight minutes to go in the game, Farad Cobb didn't have a point. Didn't have to bring a real toughness handling the basketball for them to handle VCU, and the North Carolina State's got good basketball team. Swift has it knocked away, and out of bounds off to Sean Moore. I love these guys who come on board with ESPN recently. So the Bearcats uh, all of a sudden explode. <laughs> knocked away. That's a block shot. With Never a played basketball. Run. And they're going to win this game in overtime. Allen can't hit. The tip follow is Basically, this is what happened the last and that minute. Coming off a double overtime loss. Missing on the road everything it's since hitting their free throws. At home for Cincinnati. Over 19th ranked San Diego State, it's the first win by an American Athletic Conference team this season against a ranked team, and it's wow. just desperately needed by the Bearcats. Coming up next on ESPN2, right. Sports Tap in the Old Big East. Man, I don't know what's going on so this year. Very unpredictable.